Today, we're going to be reading another devotional out of Indescribable by Louis Giglio. And the one I'm going to read about, I'm wondering, have you ever heard about the Aurora Borealis? You have? Is that a yes? Okay. Here is the story we're going to read today, or the devotional we're going to read today. And I also have another book that has real photographs of the Aurora Borealis that I'll show you in a minute. This one's called Light Up the World. And one of the reasons I chose this one, I'll explain it probably when we get to that part, but if you saw my Sunday school lesson this past week, we talked about Pentecost, which was when the Holy Spirit came to his people after Jesus had left the earth. And you know what? One of the things we talked about in the lesson was how we can be like lights to other people to show them the way to God. When we follow God, we point other people to how great God is and to Jesus, right? So the reason this is called Light Up the World is because it talks about that. Our verse is Matthew 5.16. Eloise, do you want to find that in your, in your story? In your book, it's page 51. It says, from Matthew 5.16, you should be a light for other people. Live so that they will see the good things you do. Live so that they will praise your Father in heaven. Okay. If you have ever seen the Northern Lights, which is the other word for Aurora Borealis, which is a really big word, or two words actually. If you've ever seen the Northern Lights, then you know God can put on a light show like no other. The Northern Lights or Aurora Borealis are brightly colored lights that shimmer and dance across the sky in the areas around the North Pole. So there's a drawing of that. I'm gonna read a little bit more of this in a second, but first I thought I'd show you from, we have a, a neat book that has pictures of interesting things around the world. And it has some pictures of what we're talking about. I'll show you in just a minute, Jack, okay? So we've got, this is a photograph of, it looks green and kind of floating like a green light cloud above the city there. Here's another one. Mm -hmm. This one is from outer space, from a space shuttle. In a space shuttle, they could see, and even from, from the space station now, because space shuttles don't go up there anymore, but from the space station, when they're near the North Pole, sometimes they can see it. And the black line is like the air above the Earth. And you can see that the lights are kind of floating above the air around the earth. So those are some real photographs of the real Aurora Borealis. Is that interesting? Yeah. And if you were to look on the computer, you could look up videos where you can see that the lights don't just sit still like when we see in a photograph. They actually like move in the sky. I've never seen it before, but I would love to see it. I would love to so here's a little more. They are caused by fast moving particles from the sun called solar wind. So stuff that comes traveling from the sun to the earth, near the earth, hitting the, this is some big words guys, electromagnetic field that surrounds and protects the earth from the sun's most harmful rays. When those particles hit gas atoms in our atmosphere, those gases flow, creating a spectacular light show. The lights are so vivid, they can even be seen from space. So those are a lot of big words. Kind of hard to understand a little bit about all of that, but pretty amazing that from the sun, stuff travels from the sun near the earth and makes those cool green lights when it comes near the earth. Or other color lights sometimes. Such an amazing show could only be created by an amazing, who made the world? God. God. And that light show's chief purpose, main purpose, is to tell us how great and glorious our God is. But the sky is not the only thing God uses to tell about his greatness and glory. God shines the light of his love into our lives and your life and Jackson's life and makes us grow with love for him and for others. 
He fills us with his light for a great purpose, to shine into the world and show other people the way to follow him. How do we shine God's light? Do you want to know? God says it this way. Do not be bitter or angry or mad. Never shout angrily or say things to hurt others. Never do anything evil or really bad, right? Be kind and loving to each other. Forgive each other just as God forgave you in Christ Jesus. That's from Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. When you live this way, you'll certainly light up the world. Then it says, this is a prayer. God, light up my life with the light of your love. Help me shine your light into the whole world. So when we live like Jesus asked us to, and we can't do that by ourselves, can we? Eloise, are you able to be perfectly good without making any mistakes or ever doing anything wrong all by yourself? Can you do that all by yourself or is it super hard? You know what? The only way we can do it well is to ask God for help. The Holy Spirit is our helper. And when he helps us, we're able to do that. So that's why one of the reasons why it's super cool that Jesus said he would send the Holy Spirit to be our helper because we need him. And when we ask him for help, we can shine God's light to the whole world and other people will also choose to follow Jesus when they see how God's people love well and are kind. Jackson, why don't you come here and I'll give you out to the kiss, okay? There's one more thing it says, be amazed. The colors of the, mwah, I got a kiss and ouchie here. The colors of the northern lights are created when the solar winds bump into different gases in the atmosphere. Yellow, red, and green come from bumping into oxygen. Violet and purple or blue are created by the solar winds bumping into nitrogen. So there's different things in our air, and depending on what's in the air when, the, when those things from the sun travel, shows the different colors. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, I wanted us to maybe pray for the kids at Bethany and for ourselves that the Holy Spirit would help us to shine his light to other people because there's a lot of darkness in the world, not just real dark like when we turn off the lights, but sad and hard things and wrong things that God wants to make right. And he likes to use his people in order to help make the wrong things right. So maybe we could pray together for the kids at Bethany Church and for each other. Like this verse says, I'll read it again and then I'll turn off the video part and then we can pray. Remember Matthew 5, 16, you should be a light for other people. Live so that they will see the good things you do. Live so that they will praise your father in heaven. And that is the end of what we'll read for today.